Welcome back to Ox Tools. If this is your first visit to this channel, I'm the host, Tom, and a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a lifelong metal worker and tool maker, I'm an avid tool collector, and practitioner of the mechanical arts. During the day in my regular job, I work at a not so secret government lab, uh, making sure our researchers have all the tools, widgets, devices, uh, and things they need to conduct their scientific research. When I'm here at home in my own shop, I'm on a never-ending journey to learn as much as I can about a trade that's been really good to me. And part of that responsibility to the trade is to give back by sharing my skills, knowledge, and experience with people like you watching this video. So hopefully along the way, I preserve some knowledge for future generations. So with that said, let's go take a look at what's going on today. So this next one is, um, this comes to me from my, uh, my buddy, Robin Renzetti. And I just want to say, you know, how awesome this metalworking community is uh, on YouTube and Instagram, just kind of in general. You know, you make connections with folks all over the world and uh, become friends, literally, right? And so the story on this guy here is, um, he says, oh, hey, um, um, I got two of these and I said okay and um, um, he goes you want one and I said well I have a uh, um, Nakamishi uh, you know electronic one right and he says well these have a lot more grunt than those right you know they, you know they can take more material off and uh, so I said eh, okay sure send it along well I tried it I had you know the it needed a new hose and a couple of little things, you know, but uh, I tried it and yeah, he's right. This thing's got some, um, some grunt to it. So I put it in a little box here. So let's, let's try it out here. And you know, I put the burrs in here and some extra burrs. And then I got some uh, jig boring uh, diamond pins here if I have to grind any glass or carbide or anything like that. So, um, so there it is and look how small it is, right? It's very, very slim. And this would make a good basis for a very small ID grinder, right? Where you can make a tool block and then put a little stone or a, a diamond jig boring pin in there and Bob's your uncle, right? You're off, off to the races here. And then this is the throttle here. Now it's a little bit noisy and um, I don't want the compressor to come on. So uh, while I'm trying to talk and, uh, and do all this stuff, I'm using my, my cool air hose here that I showed you in a, the last beet loaf. Let's see. And um, so I'll just grind a little bit to kind of give you the idea of the kind of the power this thing has. I did a little bit right there. Now, don't worry, this is not going to replace my uh, files. <laughs> Robin's always like, well, how come you always file that? Because it's really slow, right? And I go, because I like the file, okay? So go away, right? <laughs> So, uh, so he has to send me tools so, so I get rid of my files, right? So, <laughs> something like that. Um, so this is 60,000 RPM, and that's one of the keys why this is so smooth, right? And, uh, and so controllable, and we'll see that in just a sec here. Um, so, you know, at 20,000 RPM or less, um, th they're just not as smooth, okay? So now you can use these fine fine pitch uh, burrs and whatnot, and the action is really smooth and really controllable. So, yeah, he's right. If I had a, a whole bunch of parts to, uh, uh, to deburr or whatever, or had heavy burrs on them, yeah, I'd use this, certainly. Um, you know, one or two parts, yeah, I'm not gonna break it out for that. But let's, uh, let's give it a go here, and um, heads up, it's gonna make some noise, so. Like I said, it makes some noise. Now, what's nice about this is it's got this sleeve here too. So that's the exhaust. The exhaust is actually coming out here so it doesn't freeze your hand. And you can see some of the chips there, right? And um, the chips from it, I'll be finding those in my socks later. But, uh, um, you know, just a short amount of time, you can knock a pretty good chamfer. Now this is 
15.5 H1050 uh, um, precipitation hardening uh, stainless steel. So it's not aluminum or just plain Jane soft steel. This has got some uh, some grunt to it itself, and uh, that was just whipping that right off of there. So kind of nice, you know, if you're in the mill or whatever, and um, you know you just want to knock some quick chamfers on something, you know, in a kind of a intermediate operation. Now clearly you'd machine those if you wanted uh, really nice ones, right? Or file them. <laughs> um, actually, yeah, you know what? Let me try it again. Let me see how good of a job I can do here. Hold on. Okay, so let's let's give this a try. So I, I laid it out even, and uh, and then hopefully uh, I can do a decent job here. I turned the compressor off again. All right, well, it's not bad. I mean, it's pretty controllable, so uh, it certainly removes material faster than a file. So uh, uh, anyway, Robin, thank you very much for sending that along. I really appreciate it. And uh, that is the fastest die grinder that I have. Actually, uh, you could probably rig this up in a tool holder too and use it to drill uh, teeny tiny little holes too, right? Um, you know, that need more RPM than your, than your machine can produce, right? So uh, um, it's, you know, the bearing system is good enough uh, that it could probably do that uh, pretty easily. This next one is, uh, this is a little gift that uh, um, an Instagram follower sent me. In, it's actually really nice. It's a decimal equivalent chart, obviously, right? Um, but it's printed on, uh, on pretty heavy uh, plastic uh, or styrene stock, or I'm not sure what it is exactly. But it's, oh, I don't know, it's 30 thou or 40 thou thick, almost a millimeter thick. It's pretty good. Um, so it lays real flat. It's kind of nice. And it's got everything on it. So inch, metric, uh, number drills, tap drill sizes, the whole nine yards. Now what's interesting is these guys reached out to me, apparently they they read something in, in my book that I wrote um, that was uh, about uh, uh, increases in feed rates and uh, uh, produces more, more uh, cost savings. I, actually I don't even remember what it was that I said uh, honestly, but uh, um, it stuck with these guys and they actually have an online um, tool cost calculator. Okay, so if you go to the toolcostcalculator.com, they have one that you can try right on their website, and um, it kind of illustrates the um, uh, tool life versus uh, um, material removal slash part cost uh, that you might not appreciate if you don't do the calculations, right? So anyway, it's kind of fun to play with. Go check it out and. Um, um, they sell these charts if you're interested in one of these uh, and you want to help out uh, a fellow metal worker. Um, anyway, uh, I don't know how much they are, but it's a nice chart. I put it up and, uh, and I'm talking about it because uh, it's a nice chart. And, um, uh, and I use it. I've been using it. So uh, anyway, tool cost calculator and check them out. And they have some other stuff too. So uh, uh, might be something you might be interested in. Well, while we're on the subject of uh, decimal equivalent charts, and drill charts, um, these guys, uh, Drill America, sent me a, uh, uh, a drill chart. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually, it was rolled up in a tube real tight, so what I like to do is uh, um, <laughs> kind of stretch them like a, uh, <laughs> like a hide or something. So uh, uh, it's probably about ready now. It's been hanging this way for a week or so, something like that. 
Um, this is, once again, another nice chart that's got all the sizes on it, uh, metric inch, the whole nine yards, some pipe sizes. Um, this one's very similar to the uh, tool cost calculator one, a uh, little bit thinner stock, uh, but it's not paper, it's, uh, um, well, maybe it is, it's, uh, you know what, I think it is paper, it's clay coated paper, kind of like uh, heavy magazine uh, 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 paper, so, uh, so I'll find a place in the shop for this. They also sent uh, um, a package of drills that I have yet to test. So that'll probably show up in another meatloaf at some point when we test those uh, drills. Kind of a unique uh, uh, container that the drills came in. So um, don't worry, I'm not selling out. Uh, uh, my rules for uh, uh, people sending me stuff and uh, doing testing is uh, it's an honest review. So if I don't like it, guess what? I don't like it and I'm going to say so. So uh, um, it's not a uh, brown nosing competition. So, uh, okay. Um, so let's uh, check out the next thing. So when a friend calls and says, hey, I'm cleaning out my shop and getting rid of a whole bunch of stuff. You want to come over? Um, make sure your answer is always yes. <laughs> So that's the case on this one here. A friend of mine, Andy, has a shop down the street, and um, he was he was uh, getting frustrated. He didn't have any room to uh, move around in his shop, and you'd have to see his shop to uh, to appreciate that. Um, and you guys think I'm a tool collector? Well, Andy's like on a whole nother level. So uh, um, if I have one, he has three of them, right? So it's that kind of a thing. Anyway, super nice guy. So I went over there and um, um, he actually, uh, the, uh, the unit next to him was empty, you know, it was a, you know, industrial unit and he knows the landlord and he said, hey, can I rent this space for a couple of weeks so I can clear my shop out and sell a bunch of stuff on Craigslist, right? So he basically filled this other unit up and uh, it, was, it was actually fun to go through and I bought a bunch of stuff from him, of course. And uh, this is one of the things that I got from him. And uh, so, I should just show you, right? Okay, so what this is, this is kind of a unique micrometer. Now I've seen these before, but I never played with one, right? And um, so I kind of, you know, I started playing with it there uh, at uh, the micrometer. Uh, I started playing with it there at his, at his shop and I said, geez, I, I think I want this, right? So anyway, I don't want to, 20 bucks or whatever it was, right? Now what's interesting about this is it's got this, it's got gears in here, right? And it has this kind of a digital numeric display here. Um, and what's interesting is it's, it's like, um, it counts up to 100, okay? Which is what I thought was kind of fascinating, right? And um, so you see here tenths, right? And, um, um, and it's still 25,000 per rev, right? But it uh, it counts up to 100, which is uh, which is one tick here, right? So now I'm trying to do this so, so you can kind of see here. But this is not how I would normally hold a micrometer, okay? So uh, um, bear with me here because it's not easy to do backwards, right? Oops. Jeez, this is this feels so wrong to me. All right. So what do we got there? Well, I can't read it upside down, so. All right, come on. Come on, Mr. Wizard, do your thing. All right, so it's 250, which is what I expected, right? So, uh, and then it, you know, it reads it out numerically, kind of like a digital micrometer, right? So, uh, um, now let's, uh, let's run it out. You know what? Now this is a little slightly undersized here, but you get the idea. And uh, so let's do this. Let's see, I'm just gonna go this way. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. So 
that's what's interesting about this thing is that uh, so these have multiple numerals on them so these are rotating as it goes around right so I think they're rotating in this axis as the the barrel turns that way so there's a little gear train in there I'm kind of dying to take it apart but uh, I also don't want to uh, not be able to put it back together and uh, and appreciate it um, but uh, anyway these pop up on um, on eBay uh, I have no idea what they go for on eBay uh, I think I paid 20 bucks for this uh, from Andy but uh, it's just more of a curio and um, but if you like this idea right uh, once again it's um, it's a way to uh, minimize mistakes right um, by you know and I've made the I've made that mistake read the micrometer wrong you know one turn or you know the classic 25,000 one turn or whatever and uh, now this one reads the tents it's got a uh, vernier, vernier or vernier depending on how you choose to pronounce it okay uh, so you can redirect to uh, to tents there okay so uh, um, pretty cool so uh, brown and sharp uh, mechanical digital micrometer or C clamp or whatever anyway pretty cool you guys want to see something cute as heck I bet you do look at this so uh, over the, you know uh, with this COVID deal um, I was working from home for three months basically and uh, I treated myself to uh, a, a little plane here and this is a Lee Neeson um, and these guys are, oh, I don't know, in Vermont or something back east, I'm not sure. They're, it's a well-known uh, woodworking tool company. And I say that real quietly, woodworker. Um, but w the reason I want to show it is, one, it's, um, I really love this thing. It's cute as heck. It just fits in your hand super nice. But um, I was doing a bunch of stuff with this uh, starboard plastic here, right? And this stuff is actually, it's soft enough um, that it's a, a bit of a pain to deburr. And uh, this is a really valid uh, way to put little, uh, to put little chamfers on, uh, on, um, on uh, soft plastics, okay? And in fact, you know, you can do more than that if you're, uh, if you're uh, skilled with one of these, right? So it does a, it does a nice smooth job as uh, where, um, let's see, I can't quite reach it. One of these, uh, you know, the, this type here um, is pretty good at, uh, at uh, chowdering your, uh, your part up. Um, and it leaves, you know, it doesn't cut as nice. And then this is a saw cut edge here. Let's see if I can do this without, a, without a slaying myself here. Actually, I should clamp this in the vise properly. And um, you can actually smooth out a saw cut with it. And, uh, but I, I've been mainly using it for uh, just taking off a little edge like that, you know, and uh, um, making some little chips. So, you know, for what they charge for this, okay, so I think this was 95 bucks, okay? And you might go, oh, wow, 95 bucks is kind of a lot of money. It's really not that much money, okay? Uh, and this thing's like super nice, right? Uh, A2 tool steel blade, really nice fine adjust. The machine works first rate. Uh, fit and finish is just wonderful. And I think they call this one a violin maker's plane, which, um, you know, kind of made me, I don't know. It, what, what do I want to say there? I don't know. Violin maker's plane? I mean, uh, that seems like a, a noble trade, right? So, uh, um, and then they had another one that's even smaller than this. It has a, this kind of weird little handle on it. Uh, I think it's called a model maker's plane. I was vacillating between the two, but I got this one. So, I may still get the other one. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm kind of excited about this thing, and uh, it, it works really good. And uh, and if you haven't deburred, uh, if you haven't, I'm going to get in trouble here. You know, I'm going to slide and cut myself. I think I got too too much of a depth of cut. Like, bear with me, all you woodchucks out there. You know, I'm not a, a, a pro woodworker. Okay. Um, You know, like those uh, 
Japanese guys that uh, that cut those, you know, one micron uh, uh, maple or um, cedar chips or whatever, you know, they have competitions to uh, to do all that. Anyway, uh, good for deburring plastics. Um, and um, I don't know if you were. Uh, it probably worked fine on aluminum too, uh, you know, with an A2 tool steel blade, but uh, uh, use at your own risk uh, for something like that. Uh, but it's quick, you can leave it sitting, you know, if you're doing a bunch of sawing or milling on plastics and you need to knock an edge off, it uh, works pretty good. You know, it was kind of bugging me that my, uh, my little demo was kind of a, I was holding it by hand, it was kind of a dog meat demo, right? Um, so let's, let's try it again, clamped in the vise here, a little, uh, a little better, oh yeah. And that was just a socket edge there, yeah, that's mucho better there, oh yeah, this is actually, oh you know what, this is funner than wood, look at that, oh yeah, and then zoop, alright. Sweet. Anyway, uh, Lee Neeson uh, Violin Makers Plane, and uh, get one for yourself. The, they're hella fun here. Whittle this thing down a little more, just for fun. Look at that. Oh, yeah. This next one. Um, so, you know, when you're working in the mill, um, and you're poking a bunch of holes and stuff, there's a lot of kind of intermediate uh, deburring steps that have to happen, right? And uh, so, in particular with holes, right? And uh, you know, I have one of these little whirly gig things and they work pretty good. Um, and they're interchangeable, you can get different, uh, well, different uh, diameter tips. But uh, uh, a lot of times for tougher materials, you know, anyway, uh, you want some powered, uh, some powered action, okay? So I was, I happened to be in McMaster recently and, um, and I noticed that they had these with quarter inch hex shanks on them with the little locking nubs on them too. And I said, huh, those are kind of cool. And they're three flute, which are kind of nice because they, they stay centralized a little bit better than, uh, than these do here. And, um, and of all odd things, they were 90 degree. Okay, I kind of expected, you know, they call them countersinks. Um, I figured they'd be um, uh, 82 degree, you know, like for, you know, inch flatheads, but they happen to be 90. So, uh, so anyway, I bought a little selection of them uh, to try. And now, what, uh, um, you know, I've had this, uh, this electric screwdriver, DeWald electric screwdriver for, a while now and I bought it at the flea market for peanuts and um, mainly because oh, it had a switch problem so I took it apart and then there was a wire that was broken so I fixed that but then the problem I had was uh, the batteries were so old they just wouldn't hold the charge right and I was like yeah, I'm just not using that thing very much wah, wah, wah. you know I was just being a, being a, uh, a weenie about it and I finally broke down and I bought a couple of batteries. I looked and they were like, I could get two batteries for 24 bucks or something. I went, why, what are you doing? Just buy the darn things, right? So I did, guess what? And these hold the charge, is pretty cool, right? So, so now I got this electric screwdriver, right? You know, that, that works fine. You know, variable speed, you know, it's got a torque thing on it. And then, the, oops, you can, I always confuse those controls, right? Uh, you can bend it, bend it 90 degrees. Oh, hey, and you can plug something like this in, and uh, and Bob's your uncle, right? So, right. I think you get the idea, right? So, oh, you don't like that size? Okay, let's go to this size. Um, ooh, that one, that one's sharp. Anyway, I think you get the idea. And now I just keep this right next to the milling machine. And, um, and you know, I just keep kind of an average size one in there, right? And um, um, I suppose, I suppose, oh, a real tool collector would get um, 
three more of these uh, so that I wouldn't have to change them, right? <laughs> Uh, you see how my brain works? You see how my brain works? Yeah, so uh, not pick one. You know, a lot of people go, oh, just pick the big one, dumbbell, and uh, and use that. And it's like, well, why? Because now I can collect the whole set of these and then get three three or four more electric screwdrivers so I don't have to change them. Like, come on, you know, you see how this works? Okay. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, these are pretty nice. And they'll fit in the impact drivers too, uh, and uh, they're kind of secure, and uh, off you go.